it's so nice to hear stories, like real stories, because you know, it's like you said, we we can talk and talk and talk, but it's it's good when you hear that people are actually applying it and changing their lives applying it. So that's great. Um, I had a different background than uh, most people. I grew up in uh, foster homes and uh, group homes and orphanages, homeless, and uh, so I didn't finish high school. I have to tell a story on this. You can decide where you yeah. want to cut uh, I, cut this no, out. I like, I like I like stories. Go for well, it. Well, this is actually a pretty recent story. We're talking like um, last Wednesday. He uh, listened to our advice when it came to LinkedIn. He listened to our advice when it came to networking, and he started his LinkedIn challenge that you and I put forth in January. And within 30 days, he had achieved his thousand connections in the first 30 days. That's well done. It is well done. And then, so then he listened to our advice when it came to, you know, getting his first cybersecurity job in the sense that um, uh, he reached out to the hiring manager and he showed the hiring manager his portfolio of try hack these hack the boxes, the stuff that he had been working on. And he bypassed the HR person and got directly, got an interview from the hiring manager and got an internship in doing ethical hacking for this company by following our advice. And I legitimately teared up and, uh, and got super emotional on stream about it because it, it, it is a testament that, you know, this may sound like a bunch of old dinosaur stuff at time. This may sound like, you know, you, know, you get two old guys like David and Neil who are just like, you know, talking out their butts. They, we haven't been in the career field and God knows how long, what, what do we have to know? But when, when I saw this message show up on, on my screen that my moderators had pushed, I legitimately got emotional because that's exactly what it is that you and I keep telling people is that do these things and your probability for success goes up dramatically because this is how the industry works. So did, did, did he have any experience before no. this position? So he had mm -hmm. zero experience. Zero experience. Neil, we've spoken previously about, you know, certs that people should perhaps look at getting or, you know, how to get experience. That's all great, but what is the first job? If someone's brand new to this field, what's a good position to look for if you're trying to break into cybersecurity? I think the, the first job that you wanna do when you look into cybersecurity is, uh, is, is a SOC analyst role. I think that's the easiest one to get into. But I wanna, I wanna say a second thing because this came up on an interview on my stream that I think is ac actually absolutely brilliant. Um, I had Joel Fulton, who is the former CISO of Splunk, these guys back here, all right? Um, he's, he's now running his own company called Lucidum. And we had him on the stream maybe three weeks ago. And this is a guy who legitimately grew up homeless um, out of sheer power and will, pulled himself up out of that, got a PhD in cybersecurity for no other reason other than he just wanted to. Um, and it turned into a CISO at Splunk, which is one of the biggest brand name organizations that you get out there in the cybersecurity space. Um, and now he's running his own company. Um, I had a different background than uh, most people. I grew up in uh, foster homes and uh, group homes and orphanages, homeless. And uh, so I didn't finish high school. I got a job working in a wood mill and used that to earn my GED while I was taking the firefighter test. And I was number 11 and they hired 10 and the woodmill shut down. And so they did through the unemployment department, they did this worker retraining program and they made you take these tests, aptitude tests, right? Your Myers-Briggs, your aptitude, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. So I'm a guy that had gone to work every day wearing overalls and come home with splinters in my hands. And my routine on when I came home was take two uh, casserole dishes and fill them with about a half an inch of rubbing alcohol and just soak my hands in them for Ooh. about a half hour watching TV because it drew the splinters out. Wow! So that's the kind of guy that I was, right? And I wasn't feeling sorry for myself. It's just what you did. So I took these tests and they said, you'd be great at computers. And I thought, there's just no way. There's really... I, I, I'm going to be the guy in mom's basement with the bare bulb burning overhead and the pile of Twinkie wrappers. Mom, I'm trying to work here. Keep the noise. Like, that is not what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> then they turned the sheet over and they said, here's the salary potential. And I thought, yeah, I could learn to love Twinkies. <laughs> so that's, that was the flip. But he said, um, you know, he talks about a concept, which is this concept of garbage jobs. 
Um, and, and when people think about garbage jobs, they think about the jobs that nobody else wants inside of a cybersecurity organization. And when you talk to, I'm sure most of your audience would agree with this is right. Red team is, is sexy as hell. Blue team is the next sexiest thing that's out there, but those jobs are highly competitive. And so Joel talks about garbage jobs in a cybersecurity organization, jobs that nobody wants to do, but they're jobs that you know, because the, nobody wants to do them, they're easy to get into. And if you crush them while you're in there, you literally have, you know, this this aura of awesomeness about you um, because you were able to do an awesome job at something that nobody wants to do. And so when we talk about garbage jobs, we're talking about things like risk and compliance, right? Doing risk assessments, writing policies, even starting even lower than like a, a SOC analyst and going to like a vulnerability management analyst, right? Where you're just doing vulnerability analysis, right? Look for those jobs that, you know, you know, may not necessarily appeal to you, but those jobs are actually probably easier to get into in a cybersecurity organization than say a red team or a blue team or job. And I give an example of this because I've seen this in a lot of the Fortune 100 companies that I've worked at, um, IT audit, right? Nobody wants to do audit work. <laughs> audit work is so miserable, right? Um, but I've seen more people in my career start off doing IT audit work and transition out of IT audit into the cybersecurity organization than I've seen jump straight into SOC analysts and straight into red team jobs. Okay, Neil, so have you got examples? I think you've mentioned a few of of job types that are, or positions that I would search for on LinkedIn to get my first job. And then once I've got that job, what's the next job that I'd look for? Basically, you know, what are the steps to get where I want to go, which may be red team, but I want to just break in because I don't have any experience. So I, I think if, if we're talking somebody who is trying to get into a cybersecurity career field or somebody who's trying to get into a cybersecurity organization, um, when you look at the job titles, right, and, and, and we could probably do an entire stream, David, on what the composition of a cybersecurity organization looks like. And we can get in crazy with some visuals and things like that. We can talk about that. Um, but when you when you think about the job titles, um, Red Teamer is actually typically not an entry-level title that you're going to find in most job recs on LinkedIn or Indeed or anything like that. Typically, the entry-level jobs that you're going to find in a cybersecurity organization are things like SOC analysts. And usually it'll be like SOC analyst one, junior SOC analyst, entry level SOC analyst, some type of SOC analyst level one. You'll see vulnerability analysis, right, as an entry level job. You'll see um, um, you'll see a risk assessment specialist as an entry level job. You'll see things like um, um, you know you know um, a policy you know policy and standards specialist, right? Those are very common entry-level jobs into an organization. And so I would encourage folks who are looking for that ground floor, right? Don't get so focused on, I want to be red team, so I need to look for a red team entry-level job. Cybersecurity organizations just don't work like that. Um, red team is a goal. And so as goal, there's multiple steps that gets you between where you are today and where that goal is. And I would encourage you to look for that SOC analyst one, Look for that IT audit, you know, specialist. Look for that um, that that SOC analyst role. I think I said that one already. Look for that that uh, risk assessor role, and use that as your foothold in the organization. Now, <clears throat> what I encourage people to do once they get into that role, I mean, be open and honest with yourself. You're taking a role that, you know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know if, if your audience will, will recognize this this analogy or not. Um, there was a uh, there was a Transformers movie, um, uh, Dark Side of the Moon, Transformers Dark Side of the Moon that that came out a number of years ago. I'm sure, and, a lot and, of people recognize it. So okay, just making it. sure. Just making sure. Um, you know, you've got the the lead character in there, right? Who's the the kid who who saves uh, who saves uh, the world with the Transformers, right? Multiple times. And he's he graduates college and he goes into um, the, the the company, um, and and the he interviews and he's talking about how he's got an Ivy League education and he's he saved the world two times and he just wants a job that matters, and the guy's like, cool, go down work in the mailroom, 
right? <laughs> and, and, and I think we can all relate to that because it's like, that's not the job that I want. The job that I want is the job that I want. I don't want to go down and work in the mailroom. But what I think is, is, is actually a pretty apt life lesson out of that movie is, is the, the guy who hired him looked at him and said, this isn't the job that you want. You want the job that comes after this job, but this is the job that you have to do first. And I think oftentimes people forget that step in their career progression that there are jobs that you have to do first before you can get to the job that you wanted to do. I went into the military wanting to do offensive hacking, but I can guarantee you that the day that I showed up at my first duty station, offensive hacking was not my first job title. Okay. It took me a couple of years before I actually got to sit at that console and do the offensive hacking mission. Right. And so, you know, remember, there's probably some garbage jobs that you need to do between whatever it is you're doing now and whatever it is you want to do. So the term garbage job, is that because it's a job that's garbage, basically? <laughs> it's, not, it's not a nice job, yeah? <laughs> it's not a nice job. We, we, we use that kind of sarcastically tongue in cheek, right? Because, I mean, you know, IT audit work is dull. And, and I, I hope I don't offend any of the IT auditors that are out there, right? But you, <laughs> you literally have a, a set of controls. And you're like, do you, do you use passwords? Yes. Are you using firewalls? Yes. Show me your policies. Let me read your policies. Check, right? That's, that's the level of mundaneness that can come with a job like IT audit. But think about, and let's use the IT auditor as experience, right? What do you learn from that? Well, you learn about cybersecurity controls. Right, you learn about firewalls, you learn about password policies, you learn about you know antivirus, you learn about all these things that make up a cybersecurity organization. You make friends at some of the highest levels possible when you do audit work in a, in a corporate world. Right, you make friends with the chief audit executive, you make friends with the CISO, you make friends with the CFO. Right, in most organizations when you do audit work, and so you have a lot of high profile visibility. And so you could legitimately, I've, I know there are auditors who are within their first three years of being audit work who have had more meetings with CISOs, CIOs, and CFOs than anybody else on the cybersecurity organization. And those are the types of relationships that you want to build. And so it's garbage jobs because nobody wants to do them because they're not cool, sexy like Red Team. But when you sit there and you dissect the benefits that come out of that, they'll pay dividends over a Red Team job in your, in your long-term career. It's interesting that you said that because, I mean, networking is networking with high quality people. And if you're spending time with people at that level, I mean, when you when you decide to change roles, you've made a lot of contacts. So like we said, going back to our LinkedIn stories, um, if you've made contacts with those people on LinkedIn and you post that you're looking for a position, they're more likely to help you because they know you. I have to tell a story on this. You can decide where you yeah. want to cut, uh, cut this I out. Like, I, like, I like stories. Go for well, it. Well, this is actually a pretty recent story. We're talking like um, last Wednesday. But we've talked on your shows about um, LinkedIn strategies and networking strategies and, th and things like this. And I, t and I harp on it pretty frequently on my stream as well. We had a, a guy who I thank you for because he came after, you know, in January when you and I did our first interview, he came to the streams and he tuned in religiously to the streams. There wasn't a stream that I did that this this kid never showed up to. I mean, he was always there and he was interactive. He asked questions. Um, he he you know, he dug deeper, um, you know, in terms of that interaction with me on stream, which is one of the big benefits that I always encourage folks about the stream is like you have direct access to me, at least for that two hour time block to ask me questions and, and I'll try to do my best to answer them. Um, he uh, listened to our advice when it came to LinkedIn. He listened to our advice when it came to networking and he started his LinkedIn challenge that you and I put forth in January. And within 30 days, he had achieved his thousand connections in the first 30 days. That's well done. It is well done. And then so then he listened to our advice when it came to you know, getting his first cybersecurity job in the sense that um, uh, he reached out to the hiring manager and he showed the hiring manager his portfolio of try hack these hack the boxes, the stuff that he had been working on. And he bypassed the HR person and got directly got an interview from the hiring manager and got an internship in doing ethical hacking for this company by following our advice. 
and he 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 said it in stream. He he came on the stream last Wednesday. He'd been holding this he'd been holding this good news into him for a, for a week, and he came on the stream when we had the stream last Wednesday, and announced it to our entire viewership last Wednesday. And I legitimately teared up and uh, and got super emotional on stream about it because it it, it is a testament that. You know, this may sound like a bunch of old dinosaur stuff at time. This may sound like, you know, you, know, you get two old guys like David and Neil who are just like, you know, talking <laughs> out their butts. They, we haven't been in the career field and God knows how long. What, what do we have to know? But when when I saw this message show up on, on my screen that my moderators had pushed, I legitimately got emotional because that's exactly what it is that you and I keep telling people is that do these things and your probability for success goes up dramatically because this is how the industry works. So did, did did he have any experience before no. this position? So he had zero experience. Zero. And he experience. took he took your advice of hack the box. You know that's how he built up his experience. Is that that's right? That's right. That's exactly right. That's and exactly. then how did he how did he make contact with the with the hiring manager again? Just to emphasize, it was through LinkedIn. Yeah. Is that right? It was through LinkedIn. He went out and researched the company that he wanted to be a part of. He found out who was working in the cybersecurity organization. He found out who the hiring manager was through his network and through the, the the searching that he had done. And he friended them on LinkedIn and then reached out to them on LinkedIn and made contact with them to get past HR for that internship. That just shows you, I mean, it's, it's so nice to hear stories, like real stories, because, you know, it's like you said, we, we can talk and talk and talk, but it's it's good when you hear that people are actually applying it and changing their lives, applying it. So that's great. It is, and like I said, I you know I'll put the video up um, as soon as I get done editing it and 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 whatnot. But if you put yours up before I put mine up, um, you can go back and look at the vod. I got crazy emotional on it, and and actually like you know I was I actually broke down into tears on stream because I was so happy for the guy. Um, he had he had achieved his dream, and he was so happy about it.